But Callan's out here crying and saying that he can't watch the fucking roast because all these popular friends are on there. And he doesn't understand that the main reason why he's not there is number one, because he's never really been that famous anyway. He's not really in that demand anyway. Even when he was in demand, you know, it was mostly because of the podcast success, not because he's a great actor. And his time has gone. You're now nearly 60 years old. Even if that great allegation didn't happen, I still think he would have ended up in the same position. His career would have just petered out as it is now. You've had your time in the sun. Just enjoy what you have now and move on. But he doesn't want to. Let's hear what he has to say. On the Patrick Beth David uh, show, May 24th. Hold on, hold on, dude. I didn't try. You, you, you're trying to get out of here. I, I can feel the energy you're trying to get out of here. I'm not trying you to get low energy, huh? I have low energy? You suck this podcast. What do you mean? I die. Uh, what do you mean? This is you. Oh, man. And uh, did you watch the Netflix roast? No. Well, uh, the, no, hold on. Yeah. Uh, did you watch the Canal fight? Uh-uh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you watch UFC? No. No. Um, well, I spent a lot of time in dreary uh, Tacoma, and I was writing the whole time. Which means that what I do is I, I walk back and forth in my Airbnb and daydream and talk to myself. So it's awesome. And then the roast. Now, I wasn't asked to do it, which is weird. I'm but looking, you're not a roaster. Not a roaster. I am looking at all my friends who seem to have blown up since COVID. And sometimes, On the roast, yeah, sometimes it's a little difficult for me to watch uh, how outside the mix i am after mm. my entire life of dedication to a craft and to my business well i'm not in hollywood anymore that's a little bit you're out that's i'm yeah, out yeah. and probably will never get back in now here and i never won't get back happened. in yeah, and so that's happened. tough sometimes when you're 57 and you've worked hard and you had some success and then see ya and then you're on your own that's I think Brian's really misremembering how he got successful. I don't know if you guys remember, but I swear to God, the Goldbergs came about because of the success of the pod. The pod was flaming hot when he was on the Goldbergs. And he auditioned, and I think they wanted him on the show because he fit the role, and obviously because of the added free frame on the podcast, because that's when podcasts were really starting to get... That's when it was starting to reach critical mass. The bubble was about to burst, but it also was at, the, there was at their biggest, most popularist or most popular level. So obviously if you're a network, if you're a TV show, he's a competent actor. He's good enough to be a comedic actor, decent enough. Why not get him on board? And he also happens to have a podcast that's super successful. Get him on board, free views. So that's why they got him. I think he's mistaking it for like, oh, that's when they finally saw, Hollywood finally noticed me as a good, no. Hollywood never rated him as an actor, really. He, he kept getting overlooked for roles. He never really fulfilled his potential or being on a 40-year... What's that thing called? Um, what's, that, what's that thing called? 40-year version, whatever that fucking movie was in, right? He was never able to replicate that level of fame again or level of notoriety. Um, the Joker cameo, from what we led to believe, was a favor from a friend. The guy who directed it is a friend of Brian's and did him a favor and gave him like a cameo through a fucking mirror for like half a second. He never really got the success that he wanted from acting, really. He kind of only got it because of the podcast. And then, of course, the timing was awful because as soon as he got scored, and as soon as he got Goldberg and scored, then a couple, then a year after is what, COVID, in between that, Chris D'Elia, in between that, him getting cancelled, cool. But it's not like he finally achieved anything. He kind of got it because of the pod and then it went away because, you know, time to move on. It is what it is. That's and then a little you see bit those, hard. Those, it, it triggers you. Yeah. Well, it just reminds me of some things that have gone bad, and uh, so would you. It makes me what's so the word, so blood red up, angry. So when not, I not up, for their success, but no, of course not for the world that you know. And but 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 I will say this. Let me just be positive. Hey, let's get positive. Nope, fake positive. You gotta you gotta fake. lose this is fake. The, fake. But when you lose everything and you build it back, then you're probably a fully realized human being, and that's part of what a lot of successful people do and that's what they tell themselves before but you didn't build it back though you didn't build it back you were allowed to come back because that's the beauty of having a podcast having your own content you can you can basically be uncancelable which is something you should be happy about he should be happy that brendan is consistent enough with the podcast and is dependable enough to keep it running because if it was up to brendan brian it would have failed already he started a million podcasts and never fucking followed through so he was able to take some time away which he was also able to because of privilege, right? He's, he's born rich, so he's able to not work for a while, then come back and pick up where he left off because the podcast isn't really dictated by, you know, what goes on in the news and shit. You can kind of do your own thing. You're kind of protected there. 
So you should be thankful for that. But it's not like you built yourself up. It's like, you know, the success of the podcast allowed you to kind of get away with murder, essentially. Or they blow their fucking <laughs> Because let's be real. If I was accused of what Brian Callan was accused of, I don't get the chance to be driving. I don't drive a Tesla. I don't turn up to a podcast wearing skinny jeans and sandals. That's what has happened to me. Do you know what I mean? Let's also be fair about that. Like, the guy needs to be thankful. He needs to be very thankful. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Sanaz is all upset. No, listen, I'm fine. I'm fine. Look at me. Yeah, you see, fucking no. This one, I need honestly. Big up Austin Casey. I need more of you guys on here that are law aficionados that know the law, because this is the truth. And when he had the Goldbergs, he pretty much checked out the pot. It's like, do you remember? He used to turn up late. Brendan would get annoyed that he kept turning up late. He wouldn't know anything that was going on. He'd kind of act a little bit like he was bigger than the show a little bit. Do you remember? He didn't really he didn't really respect the, the, the podcast until um school got cancelled. Then he respected the podcast again because when he came back on it, when he you know started taking it seriously again, the money increased, right? From the time that he was probably not even paying attention. So come on, man. Like sometimes, you know, karma is karma. Like it is what it is. I'm taking my ball and I'm going home. I don't have my ball. I'm just gonna go home. You're just gonna go home. There's you guys no ball. You guys playing? Uh, you, you got you got enough people on the court. You didn't even get a ball to play. I'm, I'm over here. I'm, I'll be stretching. Oh, no, okay, you got it. You got it. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna go hey, home. Hey, big up Rodolfo Duran. He got scored by me too. Boom. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> he got scored by me too. I love it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a ball against a wall. If that's cool, <laughs> I'll throw a ball against anybody who wants to come see me throw a ball against a wall. <clears throat> You know, you go ahead. Yeah, I think it's a number of things, though. It's like, uh, let's think who's on there. So you said blew up after COVID. So it's it's called good. No, it's good. Let's think about Let me just think about this. After, though. So it's 2019. Like, so it's good. like Tony Hinchcliffe, right? He's been grinding awesome. for a hot second. Well, deserved. a lot of these guys, it's like their well time. Deserved. So their time. yeah, so it, it would have happened. Take COVID out of it. It would have. It, Eventually, it's going to happen. Like things when, are good. Things when, are good. When though. guys are so yeah. talented and good, yeah. it's going to happen regardless. It's just some take longer. Yeah. So it's like. It's just. Yes, but also you guys fucked up and you guys created an opening for those guys to come in and take your place through hubris, arrogance. Like, because they were literally, according to Bobby Lee, they were lauding the fact that they're friends with Rogan over people's heads. They'd be saying, oh, we, what should we tell Rogan? Like, do you know what I mean? They were basically acting like that in the comedy scene without Rogan's knowledge because I think he only found out when the Bobby Lee thing kind of blew up and that's also probably the reason why he kind of pulled away from these guys a little bit. But it's their fault. They actually created the space for those guys to succeed. Yes, they would have succeeded anyway, but they also made it easy for Rogan to replace them because, you know, Shane Gillis and Schultz compared to these guys are completely chill. They're self-starters. They're hustlers. They do their own thing. They probably don't ask Rogan for as much favors as these two do. Like, it's probably a breath of fresh air to have friends like Schultz and Gillis doing their own thing and smashing it and Norman and Ari Shafir. Instead of these guys just like, you know, asking Rogan, when can I get back on the show so I can sell tickets for my dates in Tacoma? He's like, fuck, you know, haven't I given you enough already? Brendan, one podcast, oh, give me your TRX truck if you don't want it anymore. So, like, bro, I gave you a career. They want me to give you a car. Fuck off, man. <laughs> for tony it's like now it's his time yes like we had we had the torch for quite some time yes my momentum though so, my so momentum in 2019 was fucking on the daddy was finally upswing. red hot well i was so busy i had sold a show i was yeah. doing another show i was on two tv shows my problem was i didn't know what to do with my uh, for <laughs> uh, by the way what was that show it was a netflix show right brian callen do you guys remember that brian callen chris D'Elia, netflix it was a netflix show that they sold and it got cancelled, of course, when they both got fucking, you know, there we go. There we go. Look at that. Scrapped, bro. Scrapped. Uh, do we have the original article? No, we don't. Let's see. Let's look at this. How sad. Another Amy Kaufman bomb. By the way, big up Amy Kaufman. What, I wonder what she's doing now. Let me put her in another, let me put her in another fucking window. What's, what's this lady doing? Um... A month after Crystalia was accused of sexual inappropri inappropriate in in impropriety, sorry, sexual impropriety by multiple women, Netflix have confirmed that they decided not to proceed with a prank show featuring the comic. In June, numerous women came forward on social media and then the Times claiming that the stand-up comedian had acted inappropriately towards them. Dalia thought he denied it. 
When the allegation surfaced, D'Elia had only just closed the deal with Netflix to make a show with one of his best friends and fellow comedian Brian Cannon. Even though Brian Cannon said, oh, we don't know each other, we're not friends, we don't hang out, he's referred to a best friend and fellow comedian. The non-scripted series was to focus on the relationship between the two comics and their affinity for pulling hijinks. According to the, the source familiar with the deal, but the show had yet to be to production when D'Elia came under fire from Netflix, scrapped the show, a spokesperson said. So the show was actually going to be pretty, it was probably going to be quite, quite good. Like a fly on the wall thing of Chris D'Elia and Brian doing their thing, ripping, ripping into each other, bantering, all that good stuff, maybe some family stuff, whatever. And it got scrapped. Ha! 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 Real, I was like, I had two, I was going to be on two shows. Yep. And then one of which was like the most popular show on, on ABC. And then I was... I remember the last show I did at the uh, the Palm Beach Improv, I sold so much. Remember, look at this remembrance, walking down, remembering it. That's why I told you before that I think Brendan definitely had a little bit of a depressive moment. Then he kind of got out of it. But I said previously that the reason why Brendan seems to be a little bit, you know, dis dismissive and just whatever lackadaisical in this in this conversation and isn't really supporting Brian too much because I feel like he came to the. He, he accepted a while back, maybe when he quit comedy, that he was okay because he makes money. Because I think, judging by what we've seen with Brendan, he wants to appear like a big deal. He wants to look like a former linebacker, a former NFL quarterback, whatever, whatever he was, right? Defensive tackle. He wants to look like a former person who was playing well, who was playing at a high level and still has money. So he buys all the stuff that all former athletes buys, and lives that kind of lifestyle. So he appears still successful. So as long as the podcast pays him well, he's okay. He doesn't really care about comedy because comedy wasn't paying him well enough and it was too embarrassing to go to shows and have no one turn up. That's why he's not that bothered. He probably would feel the same way Brian did if he cared about having a special, if he cared about going on tour, if he cared about being regarded as a great comedian. He, would, he probably would be feeling the same as Callum, but he cares more about the money. So he's probably just like, I don't really give a fuck. This pod's still paying us well. We've got to deal with podcast one now. Fuck it. But Callan, obviously, he he wants he wants to win an Emmy. He always wanted to win an Oscar. He always wanted to, you know, um, whatever. You know, he wants to be regarded on that level, and that's never going to happen now. He knows it. Many tickets. It was they were going to add another show. Yeah. I was selling out in Denver before the wheels hit the tarmac. It was finally that. Yeah. And that's all. It was just a little bit, and then COVID and not being able to do the podcast, a lot of stuff like that. So, you know. A lot of things. A lot of things go on in life. And uh, it just reminds me of yeah, it sucks. loss. No, I just... Oh, actually, Game Bridge Football, a good point. But did, did Conor McGregor whiskey come out before Papa's Tiger whiskey? I never thought about that, actually. Did he just copy Conor? Huh. I did remember it being odd that he kind of got into whiskey because he kind of got into whiskey and then immediately launched a brand. It wasn't even like... Because Connor's been a wild boy and a party boy for a long time. But if you know MMA, yo, big up, big up, big up. Mr. Wine Cheese Wine yeah, Cheese exactly. Wine Cheese Wine. <laughs> exactly, yeah, 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 exactly. I knew Callum was a failure and was always going to not amount to much and never going to realise his potential. When even in the group, when he did the when he did the fight companions, even in that group of him being with Eddie Bravo, Brendan and Joe Rogan, his role in that group was to bring the wine and the cheese. And there'll be plenty of fight companions that they planned ahead of time. He forget to bring the wine and the cheese. Oh, I forgot. I was in the like, bro, just come late and bring the fucking wine and cheese. How are you forgetting? This is the role that you play here. You're the fucking cuck. You're the, you're the casual here. You don't know much about UFC. The one role that you play here is to be the comedic punching bag for Rogan to dunk on and tell you to shut the fuck up. And also bring the cheese. He wouldn't even, he wouldn't even follow through on that. It's like, what are you good for? You can't even remember to bring the wine and cheese. Like, fucking hell. But yeah, um, good point, Gamebridge Footballer, man. Uh, I had no idea. Yeah, you're right about the, about the fucking whiskey. It was too close for me. He got into whiskey, then he immediately launched one. It was just too fast. You have to kind of live the life. Because again, connor has been a party boy and a, you know, a drinker for a while. Then he launched a whiskey. It makes sense. Brendan went straight into it. He should have took his time a little bit. So it reminds me of loss and it reminds me of and it and and I lose all the energy now, do you want to take in a, my body. Do you want to take a cold hand to chin Sonata's face or bring up Netflix or did I bring it up?
No, 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 no. But that's no. Not I think I fault. brought it up. I'm glad we brought it no, up. No, I shouldn't have brought it up. You gotta live your life. What are, what are you gonna do? Don't bring up certain things because I'm sensitive. Fuck off. Like that's just the way it is. And I bad boy with big balls. Well, it's funny he says that because Brendan's the opposite. You definitely can't bring up certain things around Brendan because he doesn't get. He doesn't like it. Even when Brian promotes his dates at the end of the show, he's always rubbing his eyes, looking up. He feels so uneasy, but he doesn't want to seem like a hater by not letting him promote his shows. So he just kind of lets it happen. But, you know, there's certain things you definitely can't bring up around Brendan for sure. I will tank a podcast. That's all. <laughs> I will tank. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Podcast. We can't bring that stuff up if you're going to be sad pants. Cause I, it, I'm a little soggy diapers. Yeah. And you got to call me out on it. Yeah. But by the way, We've had some great podcasts. Of course, yeah, this We've happens. We've had some great podcasts. Yeah, it's been great. And, and we, just gotta, uh, we just gotta do a few trigger words. Few trigger words. And few we just, trigger we, words. We just gotta avoid those trigger words. That's all. Got to word. No, you don't. You don't have to. I'm not fucking. You don't have to walk on eggshells. Yeah, just don't we, bring no. up other comics. <laughs> <laughs> and Netflix, that's all. And he, uh, but just don't bring up success. Celebrities. Don't bring just, up money. Just or bring up no, but don't just, bring up flying privately or anything like that. You just can't bring up anybody I've ever worked with. Don't bring up dreams. Don't bring up my <laughs> dreams. That's all. Don't bring up my. I don't know. There has to come a point in time, as funny as this is, there has to come a point in time where you just accept your position. You've been doing this for so long. And, you, and that's the thing. It's not even like this is a bad outcome. You still don't like. I think at some point. As long as you don't have to work a regular job, like, because these guys wouldn't survive in a normal workplace, right? They're fucking unreliable. They're idiots for the most part. They don't really know what hard work means. For them, hard work is recording three podcasts in a week. It's fucking stupid. So they wouldn't survive a week or even a month in a normal workplace. So the fact that you're able to make money and support yourself and your family by doing this, despite your inability to do anything else, you should be happy. That's actually a good, you know, especially considering... Not everybody can do this. Not everybody has the ability to do this. Like they kind of got lucky that they started so early, the association with Rogan, and obviously the consistency, where they can still coast. Like someone made a comment actually on the final Kisabra there about it. like these guys have legitimately one of the best gigs ever. They have a shit podcast that no one listens to. They could just turn on, they just they show up, don't have to set up the equipment, don't have to upload the files, don't have to do the thumbnails, edit the don't have to do anything. Chin does everything by himself, literally, and Sanaz. And they just sit in front of a, of a camera and talk about shit that they're just seeing on the screen. They don't even research it before the show. They just see it on the screen, react to it, you know, get through the ad reads and go home. Pretty decent, considering. All things considered. But still, they want more. It's not enough. I want more. And it's like, bro, how much more do you want? You're nearly 60 years old. You're not going to be virally successful. You're not going to be the next Matt Reif. Like, it's over. And it's okay. It's fine. It's actually okay that it's over. You had a good you had your time in the sun. You enjoyed like having what 10 plus years of Rogan's undivided attention when he was in LA. You got the chance to go on the Rogan experience as much as you wanted to, promote your comedy. Like if that if that didn't get you to the next level, it, you're never going to get to it now. If Rogan in LA when you were there supercharging you putting you on fucking lineups, having you on these podcasts, talking about you every two minutes. If that didn't help, nothing's going to help now, especially post-grape allegations, post-drama, post-Bobby Lee, post-Annie, post Kalila. Post like, it's over. Just, it's done. It's done. Enjoy what you have. It's done. My dreams that have been dashed to the rocks. Don't bring up my Humpty Dumpty dreams. Just don't do that. And we'll be fine. You know, now you don't have That's any the thing. energy. The podcast isn't ending. It's never going to end. If they just, just center themselves and just realize how lucky they actually are, they could ride this shit until the wheels fall off. 20, 30 years plus, they could easily make money from this shit. If they just like, okay, I'm not going to be a Matt Rife. I'm probably never going to have that panning drone shot inside Madison Square Garden like Schultz he just showed. I'm probably never going to make 100000 a month like, you know, Shane Gillis and fucking Matt do um, on, their, on their podcast on Patreon. I'm probably never going to be on Saturday Night Live. But at least I get to make, what, a hundred grand of a year doing a crappy podcast that no one listens to. And then plus whatever bonus I make going on the road. That's a good life, bro. Come on, man. That's a good life, man. It's not too bad. It's not too shabby. It beats working in an office. It beats working in a building site or roofing like Rogan did that one summer that he doesn't stop talking about. It's not that shabby, man. Be thankful. It's not that shabby at all.
Because imagine if the podcast bubble burst in a way that no podcast was successful again. Imagine if it was extreme where it's like it, the whole thing flatlined. Maybe the attention and the money isn't as good as it once was, but it's still a viable option of a career. They're still doing okay with it. Why is that not enough? Hey, dude, now you're fucking all mopey pants. Yeah, because there's nothing we can do. Like, Look, this is the situation. It's fine. We ran with the torch for a hot. It. All righty. I agree with you 100%. Rogan used to call Khan his brother. Rogan is just as fake as, uh, fake as the LA phone as he criticizes, even worse. I agree. I said it from the beginning. I said, if you're going to be the anti cancel again, this is why I think they're all full of shit. Rogan, for before these guys got canceled, Rogan would never shut up about cancel culture. Now he doesn't talk about it anymore because I think he recognizes the hypocrisy. But before those guys got cancelled in Callan and Chris, he would not stop talking about counterculture. Maybe because he was nervous about his own situation, but I think for some reason there's a there's a there's a patent and I don't I don't know why this is the case, because if you're a good dude and you know you don't do any fuckery, you should be okay. But there's a there's a population of guys out there who have this fear that a woman's just gonna accuse them of rape falsely. I don't know. There's I think there's a there's a there's a I'm sure some of you guys know there's a there's guys out there that have this fear in their head that they're just going to get accused of rape and their whole life is going to just be destroyed cool those guys are the ones I think are the most vocal about counterculture for some reason they're fucking always fucking preaching about it and shouting about it from the rooftops if you're that guy and you have that fear at least follow through especially when you've got the biggest platform the biggest podcast in the world if one of your friends gets cancelled you should be using your platform as a way to defend them and try and push against this council culture thing that you think is going to end humanity, you know, and civilization as we know it. But he didn't. The moment Chris and Brian got cancelled, Rogan completely got, you know, fucking amnesia. He didn't even remember their names. He wouldn't. He did an amazing job of not talking about those guys for like a year plus. He never brought it up again. Anytime somebody tried to bring it up, he shut it down completely. So what's all this? I want to be Mr. Cancel Culture thing, anti cancel Culture. Now your friends get cancelled and you can help them by getting them on your pod to defend themselves or talking about them and, you know, um, talking about their character and saying what you know about, like, whatever, defending them in some way. Nope, you won't do it. Nope, I'm not getting involved. Understandable, because, you know, Spotify deal happen around the same time. I understand it. But, as this guy said, full of shit a little bit. Full of shit. Hot fucking been, second. Been, we did have the torch for a hot yeah, second. Yeah, 10 years, dude. 10 you know? years of fucking... How many podcasts are out there now? Hey, at and least... it's not about torch as well. You didn't have the torch. You were just friends with Rogan at the right time. There was no torch. These guys didn't have a torch. I refuse. They didn't have a torch. They were just friends with Rogan. And they took the Rogan's friendship for granted. And they lauded the friendship over people. They took the piss. They stunned on people. Like I said to you before, there's, there's stories of Brendan going to the comedy store and parking these massive TRX truck across like free car parking spaces. And allegedly, according to the rules or the traditions of comedy clubs, you're not meant to park your car in the parking lot unless you're passed. Like, I think there's a particular spot reserved for past comics and shit. He parked his car there because I'm Rogan's friend. I'm Rogan's boy. And no one's there saying nothing because they're, he's Rogan's boy. So, you know... They kind of fucked it for themselves by not being humble, by not being chill and being cunts about it. And now they're, you know, they're reaping what they sow. We get a lot of thanks. A little fucking respect for your elders, you fucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's just the lay of the oh, land. Okay, big but... up everybody in the stream chat. Um, yeah, the, the, the lot is tiny. The parking lot is very small. There's a garage next to it as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. It's the you lay know? of the land. It's the lay of the land. It's all good. And uh, I think if I really apply myself... By the time I'm 60, I'm going to blow the fuck up again. You know? I want to see actually what he means by blow the fuck up. Let's actually see some of this content that Brian thinks he's going to blow the fuck up over. I want to see what's this comedy that he has that's so amazing that we have to listen to it. What is it? Oh, there's one here, actually. Look at this. There's one clip here that features Brian Callum. People in Oklahoma make me feel so small. Tacoma this weekend, I can't wait. Let's see some of this comedy that he's thinking is going to blow him up again. You guys better be brothers because if you're not, I'm going to freak out. <laughs> That's your son? Okay. You, you look good, bro. I mean, not really, but you know what I mean. Like, you look That's your son. You had him when you were six? You guys look twice. It's unbelievable. You have good skin. Oh, my God. That's fucking wild. That's your son. Look at him. He's just literally a version of you, just bigger. That's so 
so crazy. Just uh, both of you guys just look like you got no fucking neck. Just, <laughs> just fucking beards and just not like zero feminine energy. No estrogen at all. Just fucking. And I'm like, you're very feminine. You gotta feed them, huh? Just a, just a girl with those. What do they sleep like? <laughs> Poor thing, god damn it. Oh god, I feel bad for your bathroom. Just men. We're, we're so gross. We're all gross. Why is he standing like that? Why is he why is he standing why is he standing? Why is he standing like that? Why is he standing like he's jacked? <laughs> why is Callan standing like he's jacked? Why is he doing that? <laughs> Why is he standing like he's got a coat hanger in his shirt? <laughs> this guy, he's been doing the same routine. I'm a man. Men's bodies. Men, men, man. If I was a guy, I'd be doing this. My legs are like a horse. She's running. I put her much like... It's the same shtick. It never ends. This is the thing that he thinks everyone's fucking missing out on. This is the level of comedy that we're all missing. Look at you, you fucking giant lady. Just a big man with a red beard, huh? Fucking hey, yeah. Just fucking sitting there. Oklahoma's full of large people. I mean, I know, I do. I feel like a gazelle. You guys better. Okay, another one. Just to just to highlight the, the level of comedy we're seeing here. Now, um, I will say the protesters, they're so fucking optimistic. <laughs> I would never protest. Like, if you were like, Brian, fucking, there's a, you know the conflict that's been going on since fucking Moses and the Pharaoh parted ways? We're gonna fucking stop it. I'd be like, what? How the fuck are we gonna do that? We're gonna make signs. And we're gonna fucking camp out in the Harvard Square. And we're not fucking going to class or leaving until they fucking get it together, you know? Well, I'm not gonna make a sign. My sign would say like, it's complicated. <laughs> it would, or just, ugh, you know? I can't, I'm not the fucking guy. I don't, they're so optimistic, these kids. What do they think the Israelis are gonna be like, hey, we gotta stop, what happened? Fucking, they're in Harvard. This, these academically gifted teens they sprung up tents in Colombia and the colleges. Fuck, what are they doing? They fucking, very aggressive drum circles and they're shadow dancing. <laughs> well, what happens if we don't stop? They said they're gonna stay there. That's what they're gonna do. All right, we gotta wrap this up. Let's wrap it up. Comedy. That's comedy. Just say really loud things that you say on podcasts, loudly. Um, repeat some things, use your body. And that's funny, basically. Right? We could all be stand-up comedians then, couldn't we? If you just share some of your hot takes on stage, but you said it in a loud, aggressive way, or a, you know, a comedic way, you could also be quote-unquote funny. Hmm. Interesting. Not funny to me, though. Not funny to me. That's fucking terrible. So, I don't think we're missing out on anything with Brian being quote-unquote cancelled from Hollywood. I think he has um, a very warped sense of his own importance and his own talent levels. That's my personal opinion. And I think his situation now, he would have ended up in a situation anyway. If if what Rogan said is true about being undeniable in comedy and something, Bri Rogan, Brendan would have, Brian would have always ended up in his position anyway, eventually, because he just was never meant to be. It's one of those unfortunate things. But the fortunate thing is that he has got a pretty decent career in podcasting, which has been able to sustain him and keep him somewhat relevant. You should be thankful about that. Not trying to opine or cry or, you know, long for a career that you never had, but that was fleeting, you know, and just kind of enjoy what you have in your hand. You know, comparison is a thief of all joy, as they say. You know who's awesome? Chin's always like, stay positive, Bri, and I do. And I do. Chin, we never Chin, thought we'd we be here. we could have used that an hour ago. We never ago. thought we'd be here. <laughs> we could have used that energy an hour ago. The you, comeback is real, guys. The comeback is real. We're doing well. The comeback doesn't exist. Hey, Sanaz, I know you want to get paid, but the comeback doesn't exist. It's, if anything, Sanaz should be hoping they don't have a comeback. Because the longer they do this, the more she gets paid. The more she gets paid. No, the more that she gets exposed, the more she gets paid. The more she gets exposed, the more she might get an opportunity. So you should be hoping they stick with podcasting.
Don't let them try and do other things. You know what I mean? But big up Sanaz anyway. She's doing a good job. She's including time stamps and, you know, pushing the show in a good direction. So big up her. <laughs> big up Assad. Just screams the Supreme is systemically racist over and over again. Comedy. Yeah, exactly. 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 Dude. <laughs> We're doing well. Why are you looking up, Brendan? Brendan, <laughs> Brendan the comeback is real. Dude, the comeback is so T-C-B-I-R. real. T C B I R. T C B I. The comeback is that's real. It's too long, dude. It's too long. Even T- that sucked. T C Tick. <laughs> tick up is. Ticker. Is error. You just gotta keep doing your thing, B. Dude, keep wearing that beanie. You Let's go. You know, what, you know what? I don't want to. I don't want to get sad when you're in Appleton, Wisconsin, in two weeks. Appleton, Wisconsin, at the Skyline so Comedy Club is gonna now. be a blast. I, I love. I love. I, I will say this about comedy. I don't give a fuck how big my crowd is. I love doing it, and I always feel like the luckiest motherfucker on the planet. I get to do that and make like this weekend. No, this is fun. I felt so lucky. Dude, so lucky. When I pray, I don't. Yeah. I don't ask God for anything. Sure. I'm like, I. This is too. I, I don't need anything. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Keep that same energy when you're on this fucking podcast and you bomb. Okay, dude. I'm just saying. Because because that doesn't work for me when you just shut down for an hour. Hold on. And then now you're going. I'm so lucky. Let me I'm do so one fortunate. thing. I like to. I like to visualize things as if they've already happened, guys. This weekend, I'll be headlining Madison Square Garden, and uh, you guys make sure you get your... Well, tickets are already f- sold. <laughs> all I hope I die. I want to just... Like, it'd be funny if that's the last... The last thing he said was... That's when they'll appreciate you, though. Yeah. Then and you'll he, see clips online. How great... Gallon, one of the goats. and all One, that. of, the that's goats, goes. one of the goats. That's, that's what it is. Goes. Although my man tears, my special has 750,000 views. I had no idea. <laughs> Last time I checked, it was 250, and I was like, oh, not bad. Dude, something to be positive about. Something to be positive Shane Gill about. Shane Gill says 24 million. Listen, 24 it's, million. Not so it's not about that. So it's not really 124th. It's not 124th. It's not about that. It's 125th of what he got, yes. so that's good. Imagine bragging about man tier views. 716,000, it looks like he's got. 716,000. There's a clip here. Brian Callum being insulted by callers for 13 minutes straight. That's got 500, nearly 500,000 views from three years ago. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. That's so fucking sad. Oh. Yeah, but it's still a good pot. Good special. Good special. Yeah. All right, man. We'll go read okay. some Hallmark cards or something. I'm more uh, depressed we're out here. now. So there's a good chance. <laughs> I knew something a, was going on. You see a car wrapped around a tree. It was me and it was the a white Tesla. It was me. They're so, un- they're so unappreciative, honestly. It's so annoying how unappreciative they are, like considering just how mediocre they are. Like, it's okay to be mediocre, but the idea that you deserve more than what you currently have, especially since you've shown no acumen for it, like no talent, no ability to write interesting shows. Even the podcast isn't good. When have they relaunched and redone the podcast? Like, you know, Rogan's podcast is, I don't know, it's kind of been reinvented a couple of times, especially when you think of the guests that he gets on. The Schultz podcast has gone through a couple iterations, different different ways that they have the host on the show and some behind the camera, some on the couch, blah, blah, blah. They've mixed it up a little bit. Right now they're getting into conspiracy stuff. They're mixing up the topics. What's, what's T-Fight K been? Just them sitting down, shooting a shit in for the first half an hour and then going through current topics and shit. It's not really been interesting in any way, shape or form. They don't even try to make each other laugh. It, it's almost like they only speak to each other when they're on the pod. They kind of don't like each other, really. What did you, what, what more do you think you deserve? What have you shown? What have you shown us, really? What have you shown us? Apart from the ability to like sit in front of a microphone that's already pre-installed for you and set up for you. What have you, what have you actually displayed? It's an interesting point of view to have, man. To want more, but they're not willing to do more. You just expect to have more because you've been around for longer. It's like, it doesn't work like that anymore. And a part of me just thinks a lot of these guys just fail to compete with the competition. That's what I feel like happened as well. The podcast bubble burst, yes. Rogan moved, yes. But a lot of them just couldn't step up to the plate once more competition came in. Once other people got into podcasting, once the attention started to be spread across the board, once people started to do interesting things and do little sketch shows, all this sort of stuff, they just didn't know how to keep up. So they start crying about the old days and the rap pack and all this sort of shit. It's like, fuck off. A white Tesla wrapped around a tree. Yeah. Hey, yo, big up my guy Rodeo Brito in the chat. Wild Guan Rodeo. Big up Rodeo in the chat. Big up your chest forward. But then it'll like bounce off. Do you ever watch the fucking, uh, do you ever see, do you ever get on Instagram sometimes where the, 
the semi, the cement truck runs into each car that's against a wall, and it runs into a third. Hey, yo, hey, yo, Koya, the red, the red and sea, honestly, the red and sea, man, the red and sea, the red and sea. I still can't work out, I still can't work my head around that, because again, I come from the very minuscule, very minor, very micro, very unimportant club promotion world, right? And I did it only for a very short space of time, for a very short period of my life, way back when. But I know in those in that time, if you do one show and it goes badly, you don't immediately do another show soon after. You take your time. You lick your wounds. You're like, oh shit, no one turned up. Oh shit, everyone left after that DJ played. And you try to fix it and figure out how you can make it better. Booking better people, promoting it longer, Whatever, you just try and figure it out before you commit to the second show. These guys barely sold out the first show, which is a novelty, in Austin, Texas, which is weird again, right? You do a T5K show. T5K is always known to be LA. The whole thing about it was the Addison, what's it thing called? Um, the whatever coffee club, fight club thing they're doing. They're always tied to LA. Brendan loves LA. He lives there. Brian's obviously living there. But they do their first show in Austin. Doesn't make sense. They barely sell it out. And then you do a second one immediately there. And of course, they cancel it. It's like, why did you do that? Take your time. If anything, the second one should have been in LA, really. If you really want to try and do a second one to redeem yourself, do it in LA. Do it in a smaller venue. Sell it out. Get those pictures online to make it look like you've packed out the building, even though it's only 100 capacity. Then go from there. I still can't work out how their brains thought it would be a good idea to do a second show soon after the first one that wasn't even sold out or didn't even look that full. It was so dumb. 30 miles an hour. Oh, the it Ford, it the Ford Bronco, 0.01% yeah. survival rate. The Ford Cayenne, 0.01% survival uh, rate. Porsche, Porsche Cayenne. The Porsche Car Cayenne. I mean, so many cars that you... Exactly, exactly, Coily. Exactly. Co Look, maybe bring the chairs and list out some tools. Would it have been that hard, really, to have taken those big chairs? And guess what? Doesn't that guy have a pickup truck? Couldn't you strap these chairs to the back of the pickup truck and drive them to fucking, what you call it, Austin, Texas, and get those chairs on stage just to have, oh my God, remember the chairs, the red chairs from T5K. And then have some bits you want to run through or something. Maybe one special guest or something. Maybe have Chin do his crying singing on there. Maybe have fucking Brian Callen do his fucking shutter boxing as a kind of callback to the show. Just a little bit of effort. A little bit of effort. Nah, let's just turn up stand and then just talk about the room and you know flipping your trx it's like pff, so low effort but they want everything the so low effort you think would would fare well like the audi doesn't do well the fucking ford explorer 99 percent survival rate A ford explorer crazy yeah certain things like certain things that you'd never believe you're like what weird yeah yeah, remember yeah. that thing going around in the Bronco, how shitty it was. Oh my god, dude! Like, like, a, like an accordion, a can, like yeah. a Toronto, like that. You're like, oh my god, bad. Oh, they, you so would be. Bad. They'd have to like peel you. They'd have to pick you out with a tweezer. But in 2024, what cars have like the worst crash rating, Chip? Yeah, find out. Because <laughs> you know, because you think they would this have. This is to... a weird conversation, right? He says, if I if I smash my, if I wrap my car around a tree because I'm depressed about my career, they know that I did it because of what we spoke about. And now you're trying to research the best cars to. Wrap yourself around a tree with. Interesting. Interesting. Make it somewhat. Yeah, you get hit by a cement truck. It's not a good idea. You're not gonna. I I think regardless what you're in, it's gonna suck. But yeah, yeah. safest, and we want worst. I know. I put in worst. Oh, there it is. What car brand has the lowest safety rating? There you go. Yeah. But it's not gonna show 2024. I don't think. Dodge is the least safe right. car brand. Oof. Uh oh. Mitsubishi and Buick. Yep. Mitsubishi Buick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the number one safest car? Let me see that. Tesla. Honda. Hatchback. Honda. Mazda. Ford Explorer. Sonata, Chrysler Pacifica. Legacy. A lot of Lexus. gay cars. There, yeah, right? a lot of gay cars. Ford Explorer. Look at that. Wow. Chrysler Pacifica. Nothing you want to be seen in. But that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. That's the problem. That's it. That's it. You know? Girls like bad boys and boys like fast cars. <laughs> this show is so depressing, isn't it? It's so depressing how miserable this show is. And it's definitely a reflection of how successful all their friends are doing. Comparisons of people of all joy. They can't handle it. 
they wanted to be at the top forever. They wanted to be in Joe Rogan's hallowed inner circle forever, but they didn't do enough work to cultivate that relationship. They just thought they could just be there by default. And Rogan woke up to the fact that these guys were kind of using him in a way, kind of using him, kind of taking him for granted, ducked out, and he said sayonara. And Rogan's like one of those people. I know some of you guys know them. Remember your friends we grew up with, where if they moved house, they suddenly forgot about you? They moved an area, they suddenly got new friends? Rogan's that type of dude. When he moves to another place, he just forgets about you. Like, you're not, you don't matter as much, <laughs> you know, like out of sight, out of mind. And, you know, it's showing, it's showing to be the case because everyone that's in LA now isn't really that close to him anymore. Girls like bad boys, girls like fast cars, dude. No, boys like fast cars. Oh, God shit. damn it. Sorry, dude. Sorry about that. Oh. Uh, ooh. <laughs> now, here's the thing about the Tesla, which I didn't know about the Y and the Plaid, those. Because they're so heavy and they're aluminum, they're- Hey, great talk. We're talking about Teslas now. We're talking about the engineering with Tesla. Look at, look at Brendan's, look at Brendan. Brendan's legitimately sleeping. Brendan's actually fallen asleep. I don't blame him. He's actually fallen asleep. We're talking about fucking Tesla engineering. We're talking about the efficiencies of Tesla. We're talking about the weight distribution in Tesla. He's officially asleep. I don't blame the guy. I'd be asleep too. Fucking hell. Yeah, Callum, no socks, crossing his feet on the chair, by the way. Raw dogging some fucking tennis shoes. Raw dogging low sneakers. Probably no lining, just his raw Caucasian feet on them. Sat on the chair like a fucking five-year-old with a hoodie with white zip, with white, you know, and again, he looks like he, he dressed like a child, doesn't it? <laughs> a little bit. Hoodie with white strings, socks, shoes with no socks. Tied really tightly. The aluminum. Probably tied that tightly so he doesn't have to tie them again. He's that probably that type of guy. He just ties them really tight and then squeezes his foot in them. The heel's all fucked up and then continues going. Low maintenance. Zero effort. No effort on the content. No effort on the dress. He just goes. In his own way, he just goes.